Hi, this is Marilee. In this demo, I would like to walk you through three cool capabilities of the new HANA Cloud on SAP Cloud Platform. So the first one is the ease of provisioning and the scalability aspects of the HANA Cloud. The screen that you're seeing right now is, is my Cloud Platform account where I've already got some entitlements to create new instances of HANA Cloud. So I'm going to click on Create Instance. And out here, I need to start by providing a name and a password for the DB admin that gets created. And in the next step, I need to select the memory. So this is on top of AWS, so it's in blocks of 15 gig. So I can increase the memory from here and accordingly the compute and storage also increases. And then third step is around provisioning a data lake. So I can again enable this one here and increase the storage as well as the compute capacities out here. And the last one, which is again an important step is around whitelisting your connections. Now, if you have a need to connect through ODBC or any other SQL clients, then you need to make sure you specify the IP addresses that are, that, that are allowed to connect to HANA Cloud. So it's a very important step that you have to do before you provision this instance. So I'm not going to provision this one. I'm going to cancel it because I already have a HANA instance as well as a relational data lake out here. Now, if you click on the edit button out here, once it gets provisioned, you will be able to see the memory and compute storage that were initially assigned when it was created. You wouldn't be able to change any of those things in the screen. You will have to open an SAP ticket if you want to change uh, the memory capacity out here. However, if you scroll down to the data lake, you have an option here to either increase or decrease your compute. So you can easily scale up and scale down your compute for the data lake and also you can increase your storage capacity from here. So from your HANA service out here, you can jump straight into your database explorer. The second capability that I wanted to talk about is on data virtualization, which is based on smart data access. Until previous release, we relied on collecting data from different sources and mashing it up before surfacing it up to an analytical tool. So with the new HANA Cloud, we can now easily connect to remote data sources without the need to replicate data. So I want to also point you to an SAP note that actually covers what are all the re supported remote sources for HANA Cloud. So if you go onto this node, you'll be able to see these are the list of databases that it supports. And below the table, you also see there is a node that if you would want to connect to Microsoft Azure SQL database, you could do it using SDI and you need to install a DP agent somewhere on a virtual machine. The third capability is around storage options. So when you look at the HANA Cloud, it has got several different storage options. So at the top, we have in-memory store where we store the frequently accessed data and we call this the hot memory. Below it, what we have is native storage extension, which is where we store the less frequent changed data. This is classified as the warm data store. And this has been available in the on-premise databases for a while and it's, it's great to have this capability on the cloud. And then we also have a data lake. Unlike other traditional data lakes that store unstructured data, this is a relational data lake consisting of tables with rows and columns. And this is based on SAP IQ. And it can connect to hyperscaler storage services and export as well as load data into them. As you can see on the right hand side, the price point um, the, is reduces as you go further down in the storage options and, the, and, and it has an inverse effect on the performance. My colleague Paul Feaster has already done some work on this topic and I would like to point you to some of his findings. He has loaded several gigabytes of data and performed a comparison on the execution time. In this slide, you can see the test was performed using 10 gigabytes worth of data comprising of 18 million sales orders as well as you know, over, over a million customer records. When all the table and data was in hot memory, the query was executed in about 0.3 seconds. 
And when we started to move the data to a cold storage, the query time drastically increased all the way up to 9.46 seconds. Now specifically for NSE topic, the once your table is created in HANA, you can easily convert either the entire table or partitions to load into memory only when requested. You can easily do this by issuing set of SQL commands. So there, especially when interacting with NSE layer, you don't have a separate interface or, or a GUI to go in to interact with NSE. It's, it's using the same SQL commands. Let's move on to the next part, which is uh, the interesting part, which is around the demonstration of how smart data access as well as the relational data lakes work. Now, when we get on to customer conversations, we generally uh, see, see many customers already build their data lakes around storage services from hyperscaler services. So in, in these instances, we would need to be able to see how best you can bring more value by showing how you can obtain data from these storage services and also from SAP systems and, and be able to er, obtain insights from these data. And the first thing that I wanted to show is how you could obtain data from an S3 storage sitting in AWS and leverage it in HANA Cloud. So the, what the technology we're going to use is using smart data access. So within HANA Cloud, we're going to create a virtual table which will show the records or the data that, has, that is sitting in an S3 storage. Now for that, I have already prepared a landscape. I'm going to navigate to my AWS console and out here I have created um, an S3 bucket. I've just named it as you know Athena 2020A. And within this particular bucket, I have a folder called data sets and that's where my employee records are stored. And it is this particular CSV file that we're going to see from HANA Cloud. Now, in order to also expose this particular CSV file, what we need is a service from Athena. So Athena is a serverless query service. So with Athena, what you can do is we can, we can create a table based on the data set that's loaded in S3 bucket. So I've already created um, a table here. With this, with this particular definition. And when I execute this particular query, they should be able to pull up the records that were available in that particular CSV file. So now I'm going to switch to the HANA Database Explorer. And within the HANA Cloud Database, I'm going to look for the remote sources. And from here, I can create a remote source for Athena. So here you have the different adapters out here to connect to different sources. So I'm actually selecting Athena here, and I just need to provide the name of the work group as well as the credentials to connect to the particular AWS account. So I've already created that for this particular instance here. So I have one created called AWS underscore S3. And from here, if I click on search, this should be able to pull up all the tables that are exposed through Athena. And I'm going to select this particular table and then say create a virtual object. So this is going to create a virtual table. And I can just give it as give a prefix as V. And then I will set it as set it in this particular schema. So SDA HANA tables is a schema. And once this is created, I can navigate to the tables. I will select the schema. And I should see my virtual table here. So this should be able to pull up the definition that was defined earlier. And from here, I should be able to open the particular table data and view it from here. So this is all virtual. So in this case, HANA Cloud is, is, not, is, is not pulled in the data from AWS. The data is sitting right now in the S3 bucket and we're just virtually being able to access it. The last part of the demo is a quick walkthrough of the relational data lake capabilities. So as part of this demo, what I'm going to do is connect with Microsoft Azure Blob Storage 
and import that data directly into the relational data lake. And once the data is in the relational data lake, we can create virtual tables on the HANA database and be able to access the same data. Now for this demonstration, I've already prepared my Azure account. I've created a storage account with the name HANA RDL. And within the storage account, I have created a container which just has a CSV file for sales order items. So there are over 10,000 items out here within the sales orders uh, CSV file. And what I'm going to do is import all these data into the relational data lake. Now for this, I'm going to now switch back to the database explorer. Now in the remote sources, we already have an entry here by default, sysrdl hash cg underscore source. So this is a remote source that automatically gets created whenever we provision the re relational data lake. So this is the channel in which we would be consuming the connection with the relational data lake. Now, if I go and click on the search here, this will give me a list of all the standard objects that are available within the relational data lake. But for us, you particularly need to look at sysrdl hash cg. And this is where all the tables that we create will get created. Now, at the moment, you see there is no records here. So in order to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of tables here. So I'm going to use a, a set of commands that I've already created. So what does this do? So all we're doing is we're going to call um, this particular schema and a procedure called remote execute. And we're going to provide a bunch of SQL commands. So this is batching of these commands. So it's pretty much similar to HANA Cloud SQL commands. So you just issue a create table here. So I created a sales order table matching to the data type and columns that are in the CSV file. And right below the create table, I'm also issuing a load table command. And this is going to look for the sales order items in the my container, which I had created in Azure. And below are all the connection strings, which I've just carried forward from my Azure account. And once I execute this, this should create a sales order table within the relational data lake and also import this particular data from the CSV file into this table. Now, if I go back to my remote source and for this particular schema, when I try to search for a record, search for the records here, you will see a new table has been created. I'm going to click on this particular table and create a virtual object out of it. So I'm going to prefix this one again with the V and put it in a different schema. This is RDL HANA tables. And once the table is created, I need to now go back to the tables, set the schema to RDL HANA table. And here is the virtual table on top of relational data lake table that we created earlier. So I can again open the data and this should show all the sales order items which have been imported into the relational data store. Well, I hope you found it useful watching these uh, three cool capabilities that I demonstrated. Thanks for watching.